Hey guys, welcome back to the Brothers Void. It's some time for another um, hot reads of the week. This week, um, we got Josh and Chris and myself here today. And um, this week, I'm going to start us off. We're going to start off by talking about Superman, Son of Cal L, number fourteen by Tom Taylor, Cian Torme, and um, the colorist is Federico Bli. Um, hope I did not butcher your name. I'm sorry if I did, but um, colors are great. So, um, anyways, I will get to the um story now. Um, this issue, um, my first thoughts are it looks like we're finally starting to um come to the end game. I felt like that a few issues back, but they took some time to introduce a couple more characters to add towards this um towards the um end game here with um, and this is. Actually, the introduction for um, for the costume identity of um, I can never ever think of his name, um, the character's name, who's Johnson's new boyfriend, I guess. But um, his superhero identity is now going to be called Gossamer, and he's wearing a um, he's wearing a um, hoodie kind of sleek outfit um, with a. Um, but anyway, it's um it's an interesting design. I'm not I'm not much of a fan of hoodies for superhero designs. Honestly, it looks just too casual. It doesn't really stick out to me. But it's not a bad design, and it's a good choice to um honestly give him a new identity now that he's um been outed to the world. So um I, I do like the fact that they're kind of slowly introducing him as a hero. But um anyways, I think. This issue has been the build up towards the final confrontation because I think we're all kind of bringing all bridging all the Superman books back together towards the return of Cal L, which is where we're heading with Action Comics as well. Um, honestly, I think Action Comics probably should have brought Cal L back <laughs> about six months ago, but that's a whole nother rant. But anyways, um, this issue actually brings us to the. Um, back to Jonathan gathering up everybody to make an attack on President Bendix, um, who has been basically the foil in the side of Jonathan since he's um since Cal has left since OG Superman's left Earth. He's been kind of the foil for Jonathan really um creating like laboratory superhumans against their own will and stuff like that and setting them out to attack people and things like that. And Jonathan's really been a lot more proactive um, about going after like this thing and trying to get it stopped. I think it's something that would have been a little bit of political murky waters for um, Clark, but um, Jonathan is a lot more headstrong. He's got that Lois Lane in him there for that. Um, but yeah, this is the gathering. He's gathered up the revolutionaries and they are actually going after President ben, um, Bendix, I believe is the name. I think it's kind of a um a playful play towards um Brian Michael Bendis a little bit. But um anyways, um I'm rambling a little bit here, but I think this issue really um really is starting to show the end game now. So because we had a great moment where we see Robin kind of sneak in and they're like, Hey, we're on a submarine. How did you get down here? And Jonathan just goes, He does that <laughs> and they actually meet up and everything. It's great. And um then we get probably what my favorite part of this issue. Um, we see Gossamer go into um, go into the city and actually um, ask the people like running the um, running the city, the running the protection for the city. Is like, hey, do you want to, do you really want this, or do you want to help be helpful and um, bring this regime down to be and be decent people? And they're like take him down and that was like one of my favorite moments <laughs> that was by far my favorite moment of the whole psalm issue just great to show the people are actually getting sick of this person too like just abusing them and abusing the people and um it ends on a cliffhanger which i don't want to give away because it uh, does give gossamer like something that he's uh really going to be um struggling with with the next issue and um i don't want to give that away because you definitely don't want to read that and it's a cliffhanger that really really does help add towards his character in my opinion um but overall i'm really enjoying this issue i think cian torme's um artwork was really really is really great i think that um he's he's a great fit for the style that's um 
really been established for this series, kind of the mixture of kind of quasi-realistic, but cartoony enough to be on the give this show, um, give this series a fun kinetic energy. I'm really enjoying the series a lot, guys. I'm I'm glad I'm glad I decided to stick it out. Really take on because I've really enjoyed it. I think Tom Taylor's done a great job with um Jonathan. I just I would say over and over again. I think he's handled the character really well and set making it the best of a situation that was not really <laughs> not really advantageous for a lot of fans, but I think a lot of fans have kind of kind of ra- come around to it because of how well he's handled the character. All right, Josh. Hey, uh, um, yeah. Hey Daniel, before you hand it over to Josh real quick, I just noticed some um, that's a uh, that's a DC comic, right? Uh, yes. Better, you better be careful throwing around that name Endgame too much. You don't want Disney coming after you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. no, not, definitely not. <laughs> um, Daniel, I agree. I think um, they've done a good job. Tom Taylor's established Bendix as Jonathan's Lex Luthor. Yes, um, that, that's definitely the that. thing. That I think he's trying to pull with him. He's even had him working with um, Luthor now, but he's – Definitely Jonathan's Luther. And um, it really helps that it's a very political thing. This um, Luther was more of a. Luther's always been more of a moral thing, the um, moral opposition to Clark. But um, this is more of a political opposition that um, really plays into his, his um, being both Clark and um, Lois's child. And it really shows it off very well. Well, yeah, Clark is a moral character, and Jonathan. Because he is human and Kryptonian, he's allowed to be political because he was born here. So we've yes. got that going on. Um, well, see, guys, for my book this week, I went back to one that I have been reading and really enjoying. A couple weeks ago, I did Beware of the Eye of Odin number one. Well, today I'm jumping over to Beware of the Eye of Odin number three. And I know I skipped over number two, I said, but we're going to talk about number three because it just hit. Um, there, Talk about spoilers a, here. I've only yeah. read up to number two, so <laughs> um, there's a there's a little bit of a, a a skip there, but they're they're still heading after the trolls. I think if you remember the last time I talked, the trolls had gotten the Eye of Odin, and they were after them for it. Well, um, Heigl, the main character, the prince, has decided that he's not going to watch anybody else die, so he has snuck out at night to leave and go battle the um the trolls and get the Eye of Odin back. Um, Doug Wagner as as the writer, Tim Odlin, the artist, Michelle Madsen Colors, Ed Dukeshire Letters, and Erica Shantz Design. Um, Odlin and Wagner have created this great universe, and it's really great. The art in this is just beautiful. Um, Heigl's run off to battle the trolls by himself, and he has the hammer, the, the axe, that should be so great. And he's going to sneak in and follow the trolls into their cave and take the eye and sneak back out. Of course, that sounds too easy, right? Well, when he goes to sneak in before he can get in, there's this great spread with a three-headed troll that comes after him. It gets him, picks him up in the air. At first, I thought it was a tree monster because it's got like a big old tree in the middle of its head. Picks him up in the air, goes to attack him and eat him. And all of a sudden, the next thing you see is a troll with missing fingers. I mean, down to you see the nub of the finger with a little bit of bone poking out. Um, So they cut off their whole fingers. Um, It's really cartoony looking, though, because it almost looks like grape jelly. Um, But we come to find out that the girl who thought she was a Valkyrie is actually a Valkyrie. And she brings the Valkyries in to help fight the trolls. Um, Our main guy gets bit by a spider, the the one-armed warrior. And we're worried that he's going to die because the Valkyrie has said, one of you will not make it till sunrise. And the book ends on a cliffhanger with them fighting the trolls. There's some great art in here. but, But we're coming up to that final battle in the last book. Um, There's a great spread with the Valkyries coming in, helping fight the trolls. But we're going to be down to the end seeing what happens in book four. And I really can't wait to read that one. So this one has been a great read. It's a lot of fun. 
Um, it, it's just a great way to go into a story without having to know a lot about it. Um, you don't have any of the backstory from another book you have to read. Um, and it's just a fun read. A, a lot there. It, it's capitalizing on the mythology of the Norse with Thor right now. And it's, it's doing a great job, I feel. Image, pick the good time to put this book out. Chris, what have you got for us tonight? Cool. And, you know, it's kind of funny, Josh. You mentioned that one of your main characters got bit by a spider. Um, so my book that I am uh, reading this week and that I wanted to hi highlight is The Amazing Spider-Man number eight. So uh, I'm going to be talking about a guy that got bit by a spider. Um, <laughs> nice. This, uh, this story is written by Zeb Wells. Uh, we got John, the great John Romita Jr. Uh, drawing, uh, penciling on this one. Chris, that was a pretty good segue there, Paul Blart. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Scott Hanna is our anchor. Um, Marcio Menez is our colorist. And our letterer is VC's Joe Caramanga Magna. Um, so this Spider-Man kind of starts off. We were left with the cliffhanger last in, uh, book where Vulture uh, is pretty much just beating the crap out of Spider-Man because his granddaughter, uh, Peter basically told his granddaughter all the bad things he had done and that he was a murderer. And so his granddaughter wanted had to have nothing to do with the vulture. So uh, he's basically beating the crap out of Spider-Man. He's already messed up his web shooters and everything. He takes him like thousands of feet up in the air and just lets him go. And as he lets him go, he says, you, you want me to be a murderer? I'll be a murderer. And so uh, we open this uh, this book up with Spider-Man basically falling. And uh, he pretty much falls. Uh, he remembers he has some uh, web cartridges in his belt. So he takes those out and uses them uh, to save himself. Um, so uh, there's a near miss with the ground. I mean, it's pretty close. He could probably you know, breathe and uh, blow the grass below him, but uh, he does survive because we can't kill Spider-Man like eight books into a new run. Um, but anyway, uh, the fight ensues. You know, the Vulture's still not done with him. And um, if you if you uh, if you've been reading before, uh, Norman Osborn is reformed now, and he has built a suit for Spider-Man. He and Peter actually worked on it together at one time, and. Uh, He's still trying to get Peter to come work for him, which is something that has been going on for a long time. And uh, so Spider-Man calls and says, hey, I'm basically getting uh, my tail beat out here. I need that suit. Um, but uh, I, Norman won't bring it to him uh, for some reason. So Spider-Man kind of uses his... Uh, uses his knowledge of how to control Vulture, gets on his back and... Uh, kind of flies him over towards Osborne Tower and he winds up in Osborne Tower and is able to get the new suit. There's a great splash page of him coming through. Uh, but the great thing that comes with this new suit, a couple of new little toys, is actually a glider. So do we have a spider goblin is what I'm wondering because uh, we have Spider-Man on a glider now uh, with what looks like pumpkin bombs. Uh, but when he activates them and throws one, it actually releases nano spiders, which are, he can use. And, uh, he pretty much blinds the vulture with them so that he can win the fight with the nano spiders. And, uh, as he's doing that, we see the, uh, we see the glider come down and it does another really cool thing where it just attaches to his back and becomes a jetpack as well. So. Uh, a lot of cool new toys for Spider-Man to play with in this uh, issue. I really enjoyed it. Um, this this run of Spider-Man right now is not getting a lot of uh, not getting a lot of love right now, but uh, I really am enjoying it. I haven't read Spider-Man in a long time, so to kind of pick it up, it was an easy pickup to go back to, and just some familiarity with Spider-Man and who his villains are. Um, the one thing that uh, we see at the end of the comic, not really a cliffhanger, so I'll go ahead and share it. Uh, but we actually see 
Spider-Man accept the job, Peter accept the job from Norman Osborn. So looks like we're going to have Norman Osborn and Peter Parker working together over the next episodes. And uh, just a little hint for the next one. Uh, the title of this next one is called Swip and Schnick. So I'm thinking we're probably going to get Wolverine in the next one. Uh, Yep, exactly, <laughs> Daniel. So I'm pretty excited about that, Spider-Man and Wolverine together. Uh, we'll see what John Romita Jr. does drawing Wolverine. Uh, I've never seen him draw Wolverine. I'm sure he has at some point in his career. But uh, he's he was um he was on the X-Men for years. Um, he drew probably one of my favorite X-Men stories ever. It's them playing um football outside and um Scott oh, yeah. Scott proposes to Gene in that issue is. Like no villains or anything, it's just them at the mansion, and it's just one of the best stories ever, in my opinion. Awesome. Yeah, so hopefully, great. hopefully the art will be good, which I'm sure it is. See, Ramita does a great job drawing Spider Man. Uh, give me some credit there; he does a really great job. Uh, so yeah, that was my book for the week. Well, that's all we got this week, but we got a couple of other things. Uh, don't forget that this weekend at uh, Craven County Fairgrounds, we have got the first annual. Uh, I'm sorry, the Craven County JC's Fairgrounds. We have got the first annual Craven County Comic Con coming up. Uh, uh, two thirds of the Brothers Boyd will be there, along with our friend and author Emily Elder, <laughs> who'll be selling copies of her book, The Dragon's Trader. We're gonna have some fun giveaways uh, for subscribers. If you come to our table and subscribe, you can get like stickers. We're gonna have hats. We're gonna give away comic books. Uh, so yeah, you can get some free comics possibly. And we got some really nice stuff too. The more subscribers we get, we'll just elevate that level. Um, so yeah, we've got that coming up. Uh, we got a lot of guests going to be there. I know, uh, uh, Papa Stro, the maestro from WCW, uh, will be there. Um, we've got a couple of actors. Uh, William Ball will be there and, uh, Erica Monet Butter. She is also an actress. Uh, she will be there. Uh, Mean Mark Ash, another wrestler, will be there as well. I believe he was in WCW for a while, and he'll be there as well. And uh, um, we also have a uh, the variants coming that weekend too, and they're bringing a bunch of cosplayers. And if you are dressed in cosplay, they will uh, they will take your picture, and you can get a professional photo done in their booth as well. Um, also, uh, it's ten dollars to get in the door. Uh, but they're also helping out a charity called Adelphia CDC, which is a food bank uh, located in Craven County. So if you show up at the door with a five can foods, you can get in for five dollars with that five cans of food. So definitely come check that out. And the other thing is a little bit of a celebration for the Brothers Boyd as we have reached a hundred subscribers. Can I get a woohoo? Yeah, awesome. We have reached 100 subscribers. Thank you, guys. It's been really awesome uh, to see that number go above 100 this week and uh, to see that uh, we're kind of getting out there and you guys are helping spread the word, and we appreciate that. So what we want to do is we have a prize pack. We have uh, the uh, Blu-ray and digital copy of uh, the DC animated movie Injustice. Uh, we have a sealed copy of that. We have a limited edition Brothers Boyd cap uh, that that was made by uh, me personally. Uh, I do all of our embroidery. And we also have some stickers uh, that we want to send you that were made by uh, 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 Josh's wife, Jennifer Boyd. And uh, so we want to send that prize pack. But here's where, how we're going to do this, guys. What we want to do is we want you guys to like and comment on this video, and we'll uh, what we're going to do is we'll draw a random name. But what we want you to do in that comment is we want you to take a picture of your screen showing that you have subscribed to the Brothers Void. And if you can like and comment on this video and send it to us, uh, uh, we'll we'll give a few days and go ahead over to our social media pages. And follow us on uh, YouTube. Uh, I'm sorry, not YouTube. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and uh, there's one more in there. TikTok. TikTok. There it is. TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. 
we're going to announce the winner on on our social media page. And keep your eyes open tomorrow. We'll have some pictures of the prize pack, and uh, we'll we'll give you some time, and uh, we'll announce that winner by the end of this week. So uh, that's all we got for this hey, Chris, week. Uh, yes. Yeah. Before we go, I want to also um, not forget Maverick Vogue and Okinawaki are also going to be at the con. Maverick is an yeah. actor, and Okinawaki is a cosplayer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Oki, Oki has uh, been the one who kind of did all the setup of the uh, con herself. So uh, uh, give her some love uh, out there in in YouTube land and in the social media. She's done a great job. We're excited for the con. And uh, Maverick has actually made a movie uh, called Nightwing Reborn. And he'll be there giving away auto or signing uh, with autographed pictures of him and other actors from the movie, as well as he's going to be a panel as well. I have so, to say the trailer I saw for that Nightwing um, fan film looks really cool. I'm a fan film junkie, so I, <laughs> I'm really, I really love when people make just good quality fan films, and that looks pretty cool. So I'm definitely excited awesome. to see that. Yeah, and he's going to hear some footage in his panel. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, you definitely want to be there to check that out. Um, head over to uh, www.cravencountycomiccon.com. Uh, Josh can put that up on the screen for yeah. you. And uh, we will uh, – you can uh, see all the panels and check out things and come dressed in your cosplay because there will be a cosplay contest. Uh, and come by our booth and see us as well. Um, I'll be there. Josh will be there. Emily will be there. I'm pretty sure that I'll be in costumes. So if you want your picture taken with uh, 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 Silent, let's call him Silent Bill instead of Silent Bob. <laughs> Silent <laughs> Bill. And uh, we'll uh, we'll take some pictures with you as well. And hopefully uh, we'll get some pictures of you guys. And uh, we're going to be going live as well there on YouTube. So you might even get a chance to be on a YouTube video while you're there. So until the next time, uh, we thank you guys for watching the video, and we will see you at the con.